Riders, welcome to episode four of the biggest e-bike motor test that's ever been conducted on YouTube. And today, we are looking at autonomy. So we're gonna put all the e-bike motors to the extreme range test. And that's when I put them into the top assistant modes and loop my favorite downhill and just see how much kilometers we can get. But more importantly, vertical meters climbed. And riders, if you're interested to find out which is the best e-bike motor system on the market, you gotta check out the three previous videos, link in the show notes, and then in the coming couple of weeks, we are gonna crown the best e-bike motor system for 2024. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and don't miss it. Now let's introduce the motors and bikes on test. The Specialized Turbo System with the Bros Mag S motor and a 700 watt hour battery. The Bosch Race Motor with a 750 watt hour battery. The SRAM Powertrain with the Bros Mag S motor and a 630 watt hour battery. The Rocky Mountain Dynam 4.0 with a 720 watt hour battery. The Bafang M510 with an 840 watt hour battery. The Shimano EPA01 with a 900 watt hour battery. And the Giant Sync Drive Pro System with an 800 watt hour battery. Now, before we head out to the mountains, this test and sand spikes is not possible without our amazing sponsors. First up, Schwabi. Every bike here has tacky chance. We go on the ultra soft on the front and the soft on the back. So they're the control tires. Massive shout out to Schwabi, the long-term sponsor at Sands Bikes. And then Quadlock. I could not live without my Quadlock. I love it, I have it on all the bikes here. I use it as a teleprompter. Riders, if you haven't tried it, you should definitely check it out. And then Crank Brothers. Every bike here has Crank Brother pedals. Riders love the setup. Been riding the Crank Brothers shoes and pedals for the last like four months. Absolutely love it. And finally, Toe Peak have just come on as a sponsor like four months ago. That's really special to me because when I was like 18, I bought my first multi tool and now they're a sponsor. Absolutely love all their tools and a massive shout out to all our sponsors. Now, let's get out to the mountains. And it's day one of the extreme range test week. We're starting off with the giant Sync Drive Pro with the 800 watt hour battery. And riders, what is an extreme range test? Well, quite simply, I put all the systems in the highest assistant mode and go up a fire road and back down my favorite downhill and repeat it until we run out of battery. And also riders, I like to talk about range in vertical meters climbed because these are electric mountain bikes and we ride them in the mountains. If we were riding on the flat, we'd get a very different result. So of course, there are a lot of variables when doing an extreme range test, but I've tried to take most of them out. So we've got the same control tires. We've got the Schwabi Tacky Chance Ultra Soft Front, Soft Back, same tire pressure on all the bikes. Same trail up and down. Same or similar temperature, because we shot it over the same week. And also the same rider, same breakfast, three eggs on toast and two coffees, and over the whole seven bikes, I'm gonna try and have the similar or same heart rate of around 125 beats per minute. So I've taken out a lot of those variables, but riders, remember, this is a real world range test that I will be conducting over the next seven days. And if you look at all the bikes together and compare them, I think this is gonna be one of, if not the best, extreme range test that's ever been done. So in this test, we've got batteries from 630 watt hours all the way up to 900. So in the conclusion, I'm gonna break it down and do the calculation as if every motor system had a 750 watt hour battery to make it fairer. So why do I think this range test is really important? Well, I think a lot of riders out there when buying an e-bike just think the consumption of batteries is the same. So if you've got an 800 watt hour or a 750 watt hour battery, it's gonna be the same consumption over different systems. And that's just not the case, riders. Think about it, when you're buying a car, one of the first things you would do is look at the consumption of the motor over the 100 Ks, how much liters it uses. And at the end of this test, that's exactly what I wanna do. I wanna break it down, the consumption of each system and which is the most efficient. Now riders, let's crack on, because there's a lot of work to do.
Okay, now onto the conclusion and what a crazy week it was. Well, actually it wasn't a week, it was 10 days because I got a cold right in the middle of it and you can probably still hear it in my voice. But riders, over the last 10 days, I did over 11,000 vertical meters of climbing. That is impressive. So before we crack on with those results, there were a few variables in the test. So number one was my heart rate. It fluctuated between 123 average and 128. And I put that down to when I finished the test of each bike. So when I ran out of the battery, I actually rolled back to the car. And it was about a 25 minute roll back. And obviously my heart rate dropped. And also the ride time, because I am a little bit famous out in the mountains of Madrid now. And I did see a few people I knew and it was rude not to stop. So these are the results and riders remember, this is only half the story because each bike had a different size battery. After these results, we're gonna look at what are the results if each bike had a 750 watt hour battery. Number seven, the SRAM powertrain with a 630 watt hour battery. Distance, 27.12 kilometers. Time, two hours and 39 minutes. Average heart rate, 128 beats per minute. And total vertical meters climbed, 1,183 meters. Okay, so SRAM had the smallest battery in the test with the 630 watt hours, but I was expecting a little bit more vertical meters climbed. But riders, I do have a bit of confession. I did use a Schwabi Tacky Chant Ultra Soft on the back because SRAM needed the bike back and I was right in the middle of testing and I actually forgot to change the tire. So I'm gonna give SRAM the benefit of the doubt and I'm gonna give it an extra 100 meters of vertical climbing in this test because I think that's fair. But riders, what do you think? How much would have it affected the vertical meters climbed with an ultra soft on the back or just a soft? And in sixth position, the Giant Sync Drive Pro with an 800 watt hour battery. Distance, 32.03 kilometers. Time, two hours, 32 minutes. Average heart rate, 123 beats per minute. And total vertical meters climbed, 1,533 meters. If you're a fan of the channel, you'd know I've been riding giant bikes for the last couple of years. I've always been impressed with the range, never disappointed, but I did expect it to do a little bit better in this test. And in fifth position, the Specialized Turbo with a 700 watt hour battery. Distance, 33.85 kilometers. Time, three hours and nine minutes. Average heart rate, 126 beats per minute. And total vertical meters climbed, 1,607 meters. I've also been riding specialized bikes for the last couple of years. I've always been really happy with the range, and this did really well in the test, considering it is the second smallest battery in this test. And in fourth position, the Rocky Mountain Dynam 4.0 with a 720 watt hour battery. Distance, 34.73 kilometers. Time, two hours and 55 minutes. Average heart rate, 123 beats per minute and total vertical meters climbed 1,628 meters. I'm pretty new to the Rocky Mountain system, but I think overall it did really well. One thing I'm gonna say, it was harder to keep the cadence low and my heart rate low, because the motor's got a lot of power, it just wants to go. In third position, the Bosch race motor with a 750 watt hour battery. Distance, 34.4 kilometers. Time, two hours and 34 minutes. Average heart rate, 125 beats per minute and total vertical meters climbed 1,638 meters. This didn't surprise me at all because Bosch has always been fantastic on range. But riders, remember, this was the race motor. On the CX, you're probably gonna get even better range. And in second position, the Bafang M510 with an 840 watt hour battery. Distance, 35.38 kilometers. Time, two hours and 59 minutes. Average heart rate, 125 beats per minute and total vertical meters climbed 1,731 meters. The Bafang really impressed me. I didn't think it was gonna do this well in the range test because it has a lot of power. I thought the range would suffer. And in first position, the Shimano EPA 01 with a 900 watt hour battery. Distance, 37.78 kilometers. Time, two hours and 27 minutes. Average heart rate, 123 beats per minute and total vertical meters climbed 1,735 meters. So that didn't really surprise me considering the Shimano had the biggest battery on test. Now, let's look at the most efficient system if each system had a 750 watt hour battery. In seventh position, the Giant Sync Drive Pro, 1,437 meters. In sixth position, the Shimano EPA 01, 1,460 meters. In fifth position, the SRAM powertrain 
1,527 meters. In fourth position, the Bafang M510 with 1,545 meters. In third position, the Bosch race motor, 1,638 meters. And in second position, the Rocky Mountain Dynam 4.0, 1,695 meters. And the winner, the most efficient motor, is the specialized turbo system with 1,721 vertical meters of climbing. So there you go, riders. If you're looking for the most efficient system per watt hour, Specialized is the winner. And that didn't surprise me because I've had my Levo for like two years with the 700 watt hour battery and I've really never wanted for more range. So just when you think the test is over, we are looking for the absolute range monster. And some of these systems do offer a range extender. So Rocky Mountain have a 314, SRAM a 250, Bosch a 250, and Giant a 250. So if you are looking for the most autonomy out in the mountains, if you want to add a range extender, I would be looking at the Rocky Mountain or the Bosch system. So there you go, riders. What an epic 10 days. I'm definitely not going to repeat that in a hurry. So what did I learn? Well, I learned all the systems do really well on range. What you have to do is look at my calculations of the vertical meters climbed, work out how much vertical meters you want to do, and just match the battery size and the system for your needs. Anyway, riders, I hope you enjoyed this Geek of the Week video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, share it with like-minded people, and we're gonna see you next week.